Let's check out the filter and global tab in the sampler. So I'm gonna drop a synth line here. This is from the drive and glow pack. Just gonna drop it inside the sampler. And if we hit uh, C3, it's gonna trigger the original pitch of the sample. Let's go to the filter global tab. So here we have the filter section, filter envelope, and the global volume section or the uh, amplitude envelope. First, let's look at the filter. Here we can turn it on and off. Here is our graph to change the frequency, the cutoff, and the resonance up and down. You can also change them from these two tabs, right? From these two sliders right here. Uh, here are the filter types, low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject or notch filter. And the last one is a special morph filter, which we can use this slider to morph between low pass to band pass, band pass to high pass, and high pass to notch. So, and back to low pass. So, so this is a morph filter. Let's go back to the low pass. Now, uh, the slope can be changed from 24 dB per octave to 12. This will make a slightly less steeper slope, uh, so less filtering around the cutoff point. More filtering? Less. Here we can uh, change uh, the circuit types of the filters so we can add some analog drive. These are all modeled after analog synthesizers, similar to what we have in the auto filter. So once we choose one of them, then the drive uh, slider is being enabled so we can drive the filter. Each one will give you different colors of distortion. Here we can add velocity uh, to affect how much cutoff uh, we're actually uh, s uh, applying to the filter or where is the cutoff uh, according to velocity. So if I hit it soft, if I hit it strong, you can hear it's much less filtered when I hit it strong. Uh, key will follow, uh, the key, key tracking will follow the notes, so it's going to be less filtered on the top and more filtered on the bottom. And we can turn it off if we want. On the bottom, we have the shaper. It's an extra distortion unit right here, a wave shaping. We have different uh, types similar to what we have inside the operator. And here, how much, what's the amount? So let's listen to that. Hard. And right now the shaper goes into the filter, but we can switch that so now the filter goes into the shaper. So you can combine both the analog circuit drive and the actual wave shaping that is built in. Next we have the filter envelope, which is on by default, but the amount is set to zero, so it doesn't do anything. This will allow you to apply an envelope on the actual filter frequency cutoff. So let's bring it up. Now we can hear we have this, uh, the filter opens up really quickly and then closes it re really quickly in the beginning of the sound. Here we have the attack. Let's close the filter. can hear it open up. We can change the initial state of the attack. So now it's the halfway of the cutoff. And then closes. We can change the curves from this uh, handles right here. Here we have the peak of the attack, the decay, sustain, release, which we need to hear it with uh, if we bring up the release of the volume, and the state, the amount, or where the value of the release is. Let's let it close and release it. It opens back up. Very cool. Uh, we can change the timing of the envelope according to how strong we hit the notes. We can also invert it. 
And we can even loop the envelope with four different states, similar to all the envelopes in sampler, which we covered in the last video, uh, pitch and oscillator. So let's loop that. Let's make the release and the decay short. So you can create all sorts of looping effects. Lastly, we have the envelope section. Here is the global volume of the sampler. This is the output volume. You can boost it, but it's by default on minus 12 to allow you to have more uh, dynamic range, more headroom. Here we can add velocity sensitivity to the sampler, so that will actually change the volume as I hit it stronger or softer on my keyboard. Here is the main volume amplitude envelope. We have the same controls as we have on all the other envelopes. Initial, attack, decay, sustain, release. We also have the peak of the attack and we can change the curves using those handles right here, which will change to all the slopes amount um, in those uh, controls. You can click on this small button to switch it back. Uh, timing to velocity to affect the timing of the envelope. Once again, if you hit it strong, it's going to be shorter. Or if I hit it soft, it's going to be longer. We can also invert that. We can loop this envelope just like we could with the other envelopes. Down here is the global panning. We can randomize the pan with every new note. Time, this is a global effect. This will um, proportionally make all the envelopes longer or shorter. We can also have, so uh, we have key tracking on the time. So as we go up in the keyboard, it's gonna be uh, slower or faster, depends if you go negative or positive. Now we can hear the envelopes much shorter here. Let's reverse that. And they're much longer now. How many voices, how many uh, multi notes we can play at once. So we can change that to one to make it more polyphonic or bring it higher if we need more notes. And lastly, we have the re-trigger, uh, which will uh, re-trigger notes that are already playing rather than generating new notes. Um, this can save some CPU. Uh, especially if the note releases are uh, uh, being triggered uh, many times in a shorter period of time. So that's going to re-trigger the notes. It is on by default. And that's it. That's the filter global section in Sampler.